In my consultation with various clients, I often suggest a subtle technique to assist them in their self-deification process. The best way I can explain it without giving you the full detail is for them always to remember that a place is a being in and of itself. In light of this idea, I ask this question today. Who is Tartarus? Tartarus is one of the first primordial beings within the mythos of the Greek pantheon. He existed as one of the primordial forces that drove the creation of the world. He, along with a small handful of other deities, provided the first and most essential foundations for the rest of existence. If you were to ask any of the mystic cults that surrounded Tartarus, they would say that he is largely responsible for the entirety of the universe as we know it. Unlike many of the deities that most would consider, Tartarus, however, is not simply a being, but also a place. Said to be born of either the void itself or of the union between Gaia and Aether, Tartarus was the lowest point of the universe according to Greek cosmology. Set below the underworld, but separate from it. Said to have been a place of entombment for the monsters, titans, and in later myths, for mortals who had committed unforgivable sins. According to Plato, the souls who were deemed impious and unjust by the judges of the dead would be sent to Tartarus and eternally damned. Tartarus was said to be a dark, grim, and murky place, also referred to as the Great Pit, located as far beneath the underworld as heaven is above the earth. Homer described the depth by saying an anvil dropped from heaven would fall nine days and nine nights only to reach earth on the 10th day. Then by that same respect, if dropped from earth, would reach Tartarus after falling for nine days and nine nights again, reaching its destination on the 10th day. Tartarus was said to be surrounded by a bronze wall with iron gates. Others claimed it was further separated from the rest of creation by a fiery river. This river was called Phlegethon. These barriers helping to enclose those imprisoned within. Tartarus was a place for the most wicked who were to be punished and was staffed by various beings of torture and torment alongside its collection of prisoners. A tale of one of those who was to be punished within Tartarus is the story of Tantalus. There are at least three stories as to why Tantalus was to be punished. The third of these tales is the most outrageous of them all. Tantalus, one of the many sons of Zeus, was welcomed to the table of the gods on Mount Olympus. Tantalus, however, was skeptical of the omnipotence of the gods and wanted to know if they were truly all-knowing. He devised the plan to serve the gods a dish of forbidden food and see if they would know what the food was that was served to them. Tantalus had a son named Pelops and decided to kill, cut up, and serve a dish made of his son at the table of the gods to see if they could tell what it was that they were eating. The Olympian gods, being the deities that they were, immediately knew what it was that they were being served. All of them, that is, except for one. None of the gods ate any of the dish that Tantalus served to them. None of them, except for the goddess Demeter. She was still distraught at the loss of her daughter, Persephone, and was not paying enough attention. She absent-mindedly ate some of the food and ended up consuming the shoulder of Pelopus. Because of this, when Zeus ordered that the boy be rebuilt and brought back to life, Pelopus had to have an artificial shoulder to replace the one that was eaten by Demeter. Tantalus was banished to Tartarus and was doomed to everlasting hunger and thirst. He was set up to his neck in dark waters that would always evade him whenever he attempted to take a sip and forever had a cluster of grapes 
dangling just outside of his reach whenever he would try to eat them. Tartarus was home to many dark and terrifying deities. The children of Tartarus, however, are said to have been equally as terrifying as their father. He was said to have mated with Gaia, his older sister, and given birth to both Typhon and Echidna. Another source says that Tartarus was the father of Hecate, or Hecate, the goddess of witchcraft herself. I will, however, as usual, suggest that you do a bit more research as well, because there are plenty more children to this deity. 